Did you look in the intakes on that thing? Yeah. Did you see those bars that's in there? You know what those are? Oh, the sound enders. You no, know, mufflers. Yeah, they're mufflers. It helps ease, ease it on It makes so much noise when it ran that you couldn't get close to it. Do you know um, how high the, the air cushion were lifting? It would lift six train? inches. So which is about? About that high. Well, it, it looks pretty pretty high. The, the thing is, uh, why would they lift so high an aero train? Uh, it must well, be so much consuming energy. This is America. They're not too bright. You know, get it over in France, they're like that. That's a little less air to run. <laughs> this is America. They go like that. <laughs> It, it did run at six inches, though. Mm. I've got pictures of it running. Mm. There was three rails that ran alongside of it in a half-moon shape. There's a shoe that's about that long that runs in those three rails. This is the power supply. The Aurora Air Train has no power on it whatsoever except what it picks up off that shoe in those three rails. Otherwise, you take that away, it stops. I mean, you don't go anywhere. We're sure glad you came by to see us today. <laughs> All the big transformers, all the big bus bars, big heavy fuses and breakers, they're all still in it. It's just the way it was. All they took out of it was the test equipment. Other than that, everything is there. The trouble with the, providing the energy for the aero train is this. You had to have a, fi a uh, substation every five miles. Otherwise, you didn't have power to run that thing. But inside the back, where that, that shoe is, and the arm comes up, there's one great big transformer here and a great big transformer on the other side. It has six pieces of pipe that goes between it. That's the bus bars. It's all still there. Unless you have efficient energy at yeah. a low cost, yeah. then you're not going to be able to run your train. It wasn't feasible. The power consumption that it had for the speeds that it was running wasn't feasible. And so they couldn't run it. At one time, out uh, here, one of the engineers told me at the test track, when they first started that thing up and started to move it out of the barn, all the lights in the facility went down. So they had to redo the transformers to get enough power to keep it running. It, it just used too much power. And the day that it failed, Roar Industries failed right along with it. So what they did is they took it out there and they were testing it but it got to be where it wasn't feasible to take it any longer, and they only tested on it about 10 months. And they shut it down. <coughs> and that's where it stayed. We wanted to, uh, to continue and to enhance what we were doing in the way of aviation restoration and preservation of the history. And we're delighted then when other people in the city of Pueblo decided that there was a need for a, a rail type museum in Pueblo because we saw this as a natural location for the vehicles that were being kind of stored here at the Pueblo Wise Rod Aircraft Museum. We don't know how to pick it up. We don't want to just grab hold of this with a crane and have it buckle in the middle or bust the windows out of it or mess it up in any way. That's not what you do with an artifact. You've got to move it in such a way that it, uh, its integrity is in place. You don't want to do some, just mess around with it. And we just don't know how to hold, grab hold of it yet. And you said that possibly you can get hold of some engineers that might can help us. You know, let us know. Well, here's how you pick it up. Here's what you do. Because this thing's 94 feet long and 46,000 pounds. And it's not something you just pick up and run. The problem in actually getting it moved this is the question, yes. Because when you look at it, it's just like a long cigar sitting on the ground. It's like, well, where do you grab onto this thing? You can't even get a crowbar under it. You know, it's tight to the ground. It's sitting on the ground. And we don't want to damage the machine by trying to pick it up wrongly. And so we need to find out from some technical experts what the right way is. And so we've been talking with Ron, talking with you, and you know some about it, and we got some pictures, and that's great. But we still need to know what kind of a fixture is actually needed to get around this machine so that it can be picked up properly by two cranes, put on rubber tire dollies, and then shipped to our place. Someone in this area did that several years ago, 30 some years ago, when it was moved here to the airport, but for the life of us, we can't figure out who those folks are. And so we've gone back into the, mm, uh, inst not the instigators, you guys are the builders, the designers, 
those folks would know. And it's just marvelous that we're able to get a hold of you guys and that you're interested in helping us with this. And I'm sure you can come up with the technical data we would need to have someone fabricate some kind of apparatus here in the Pueblo area. We've got welders and like that. Okay, whatever we need to make. And that's what Gary's crane asked me for when he called me two weeks ago. He says, well, Jerry, you're going to have to come and look at this thing because I can't figure out how we can pick it up and not damage it. And so I don't know what else to do. We can get it moved once we get it on rubber tire dolly. But how do we pick it up? And we've looked at the sides of it near the window sets on each side. There's some cone-shaped holes, like which don't look like much to me. But your folks, I'm sure, can tell us just what we need uh, in order to be able to get the task done. And that's what, what would be so marvelous if you can, Jerome, who are, you are in contact with, can provide us with this information. It would be fantastic and help us get this thing moved. And then we'll go from there. Now that it's moved to the new location, what do we do with it? We need to get information about it, where it came from, similar to the laptop presentation you made to us today. And we've got a little bit of a complex over there, and maybe it could be enlarged or enhanced so that we can actually uh, let the world know, not just the general public in Pueblo. It just happens to be here. That is the fluke. How comes it is this last piece of machinery like this ends up in Pueblo, Colorado? That's Nowheresville, USA, <laughs> practically. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, and through the web, internet, so forth, talking to Ron and get him on a phone, call him up, and you show up here? That's a miracle right there. <laughs> and having the piece of machinery out back is a miracle, too. It's all been cut up for scrap metal mm -hmm. by now. Mm -hmm. But these guys here at the museum did not let that happen, and we sure won't let it happen either. <laughs>